get your recording. So it's 12 o'clock on January 15th, 2019. Um, we do have a quorum. Um, so call the meeting to order and please stand for the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. So before we move to the action items, I want to thank the um, faculty and staff of the district for all the uh, goodies that we have received after lunch. See, it's truly, and I believe I can speak for all the board, that it's truly an honor to serve and, and work with you guys. We are very proud of what you do for the district and the students of, of the University of Texas. Uh, so we have three um, items on the action items. The first one is the consent agenda for our November meeting, November 1st, 2018. Uh, we received those via email. Are there any questions or comments regarding the minutes from our last meeting? Um, if we don't have any questions, do we have a motion to approve the minutes from November 1st, 2018? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Kenneman. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Uh, say aye, please. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And we have a request for approval of the 1718 financial audit. And we have um, Darla Duke with Mount Terrace Project. Um, here's the Nature Annual Financial Report. So I'll go over what we consider about the three most important pages in the audit. And then we'll kind of talk about some changes that showed up this year. And if y'all have any questions, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so if you'll flip to page five, that is the page that we consider the most important out of the audit. That's your opinion page. You received an unmodified opinion. That is the highest level of assurance that you receive um, that there are no material on this statement and that all disclosures have been made in the audit. So great job on that. So if you'll flip with me to page 23, we'll take a look at your revenues and expenditures. I'm focusing in on the general fund column, which we consider probably the, the most important out of all your funds. <clears throat> if you're looking at row 5020, you'll see total revenues of $5,628,077. Going down to line 6030, total expenditures, $5,358,735. Leaving you a net change in your fund balance of a positive $269,342, ending fund balance of $830,465. So great job in that positive yeah. Yeah. Very good to the fund balance there. Now I'll flip over to page 35, and this is where we act we would look at your actual expenditures and compare it to your budget. So when we're looking over there, you'll see you have two small areas that you were slightly over budget, but they were under a 10% overage. So um, we we just look at it as a whole. Of, we're looking at that bottom line figure. So if you're looking at your total expenditure line, you'll see that you were over, or you, your expenditures were under what you budgeted by $381,551. So great job on. And that basically tells us that the goals that were set forth, that you're able to stay within the, the school is able to stay within the goals that were set forth in that budget. So great job on that. <clears throat> now, and I should have started out by thanking Chang Man Christian for um, all the work that they do to provide me with the information on doing the audit because it does take quite a lot of information and they do a great job in, in getting that packaged up for me. Um, the, the biggest change that we had this year <clears throat> was uh, the addition of the GASB 75, which would have been adding a liability on for other post-employment benefits. If you'll remember two, three years ago, we added the GASB 68, which was uh, the TRS liability for the school. 
um, each year that has become more and more difficult for us to come up with that amount. We're taking a proportional amount um, on that liability. So um, I, I guess th there's a, a huge uh, financial discussion going on with that. Um, but I'm just going to keep it down at kind of the, the school level and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you would have. But um, the cost of the audit for us to continue those liabilities was probably going to go up somewhere between four to five thousand dollars a year. So when our firm looked at recording that liability and keeping up with that year to year, <clears throat> we felt like it was more beneficial to the school for the school to keep that money in your pocket and went back to your the, the development of your school and not paying for the adding of those liabilities on. Um, University of Texas as a whole, the university systems, they record the liability, the debt for University of Texas at Tyler. And uh, there's some thinking that's involved in that, that the liability of the TRS and the OPEB should be recorded at that level also and not down at the university level or even at the charter level. So we took those liabilities off this year. So you're down to just the financials of, and the, the real numbers of what you're looking at for the school. Um, worst case scenario that we would see that TEA would come back with what we would consider a nasty letter probably around the summertime on that particular issue. And um, our managing partner, Robert Bellop, he said he's, he's on board with taking the fight to TEA to take care of um, fighting that part out of where those liabilities get recorded. So um, that's kind of where we're, we're standing right now. So this will be a year where we're, we're going to see what they say. But that's kind of what we're thinking as far as worst case scenario on that. Would that in any way affect our rating with TEA? We do not believe so, because okay. I think we're going back to um, how we did the first fight on trying to get all that changed on, um, for that first rating with yes. university charters, yes. and we think this is going to be in that same area, that we don't think it's going to be much of a fight because of how the whole system is set up with it being under the state of Texas, <coughs> well, TA being the... And our charter first reading has already been impacted where now we only have to qualify in seven indicators where other districts, school districts have to be, and other charters have to meet the, what is it, 15 or 17 indicators. We only right. have to meet seven now. And so I, I don't think it will impact it in, in any way as far as you know, that is concerned. Right. But then I just wanted to point out too that before these changes were made, the discussion was taken to the university level with UAN. Um, and Joanne and other uh, vice president of government and community, uh, Laura Jackson. So our university was involved before they made this decision. And, and we, we've already been involved with um, working with the universities from getting their accreditation, um, Sam Houston, State University of Lamar, University of Houston, and um, their reports. And they have taken the same stance of not recording those liabilities. So it, uh, it's it's not just here. It's we're we're looking at doing it across the board for for everybody to, to, to implement those changes. And it's my understanding something's being filed before the January deadline to like the legislation to or something. Okay. If I understood that right, you want to file uh, some paperwork with somebody before some okay. January deadline. If I'm understanding. Uh, yeah, I don't remember reading that email, but it's okay. it's possible. Okay. So it kind of kind of tells you where we are on that, but I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have in there. Everything else looked looked great with the numbers, uh, expenses, revenues, everything looked good. So that's really the changing of those liabilities. How we were recording those is the big impact for for your school. And can I just like to say everything is still disclosed on pages 30 oh, yes. and 31. So yes. it's not like TEA is uninformed about what's happening. Yes. yes. So that covers we, we still did the note disclosure and told them where to go get the information in in the UT system reports. So the information can be found the links in the audit to where you can go get those. It's not that the funds are not being reported, it's that they're being reported at the UT level, not yes, the UT system level. Yes. Yes. They're not even recorded on the UT Tyler level. Right, right. right. 
<laughs> These links are in the disclosure yes. portion. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? No, I was just going to say, you know, it was one of those things we're taking those numbers and we're doing a proportionate share for the university and then coming down trying to gather that information. That's the part that we just thought it was just, yeah. You have to look at it employee by employee. That's, that's the kicker is who are our employees during that given year and what was being contributed on that particular employee's behalf. And so it really got tedious. Yeah, I think just even like from our level, what we had to do with it once we got the information, that's not even counting what what had to write the man hours it took to, to get the information to us so we get our numbers out. So that that also is definitely a factor as far as the, the time used on the on the university side. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. Again, if y'all need anything, please let me know. Happy to help. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, I'll let you do that. Do we have a motion to approve the audit? I'll make the motion. Thank you. We have a second. Who's the first? Thank you. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And then the next item is the recommendation of approval of high school courses. So I just want to point out yeah. the, the sheet here. Um, so in the past, y'all as a board, um, I know some of you are new and maybe were not here when this originally occurred, but you'll see the current offerings. Um, those, anytime you offer credit for high school graduating credit in the middle school, it has to be approved by the board. So in our sense, we offer algebra one, we offer geometry, English one, um, we offer you know, the, uh, the GTC CLDW classes. Anytime you're issuing credit that's going to be counted towards high school graduation, those credits have to be approved. And so this year, um, biology um, needed to be approved, and and because there are eighth grade students who are advanced in their academic to where they put them in biology. So and this was not on the approval list, so we're needing to get back to them. Um, so you can see what's already has been approved and what you have on the list, and then we're basically just needing to add that biology credit. When would that go in to effect once we once we vote it in? Technically, it's already happened, <laughs> and they yeah, it, it was one of those things where the kids got scheduled into it, and then as we are looking at things, I'm like, wait a second, we have eighth graders in biology, and that's not on the list. Yeah. So unfortunately, it's an after the fact. We're, we're trying to, we're trying to get you to catch that. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. Now, Jacqueline, do you have anything else you want to add to that as far as like if that's a continued plan or anything of that nature? Are all those courses still what's the game plan? So, as a leadership team, we do have a lot about this for the future, and um, I don't think it will be on there for the future, but if you approve it, of course, it's still an option to me, but what we've discovered by having it is um, they, they get dual credit so quickly they almost run out of things. <laughs> so, we, we may move it back, but I mean, it'll, it'll still be an option to have it. Yeah. Speaking specifically so when, once they're approved and they're on the list, then basically that gives the curriculum team that option to utilize the items on the list, even though they may not be utilized. Right. I mean, that's even kind of like, I think at one point, the change happened where the computer science changed. It right. went from like CSP to CS1. Um, and then, you know, we have the Spanish one and two credits. They're really, I think, more for kids who come to us that already have started Spanish and things like that. But we don't want to take them off the list, even though we may not be taking that that approach at least they're on there in case we have a student who maybe transfers to us and even has and needs that course so. okay. any other questions do we have a motion to approve biology being added to the high school i'll make that motion okay. do we have a second i'll second it thank you all in favor please say aye aye, aye. <coughs> thank you then now we move to the informational items. So, you want to talk about the 
2017 accident report? This just came out. Okay. I reviewed it. Did you want that? Yeah, sure. We can. Yeah, the report was just released by. Um, TEA on December 18th, and so then, of course, we only have so many days. So basically, this report is um, accessible to all parents. Um, there's a link um, to the web font. We have to send out documentation showing that the, the um, report card or the annual report is available. So that information is gone out to parents to say that you can access or go after this, go after parents. Um, it involves everything in this document from um, our academic performance um, to, to everything from our peen stance, um, everything reporting discipline. Um, it's just basically an overview of the, the school district. Um, it has the campus improvement plans um, embedded in it for them to review. Um, as you can see, it's, it's very detailed. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things where if you really want to get to know a school district and you want to see a, um, really explore a specific area, um, it's available for parents. And that's really the purpose of it. It's, it's really the purpose is for school districts not to be able to hide anything. So if a parent wants to see how many um, criminal incidents have occurred on a, on a, in a district um, or campus, they're able to access that. If they want to see um, the, the overall performance, academic performance, this is another um, filter for them to be able to explore that as well. Um, if they want to see where schools are focusing their, their targeted improvements in and how they're looking at their goals, their annual goals, and um, um, activities that are aligned with those goals and timelines and things like that, um, they have this document. So it's really everything all embedded in one that the state requires the school to, um, to compile um, and then provide um, for parents, community members, anyone can pull this up. So, um, you know, a news media can go in and take one part of this and focus on it. Um, and so, um, I, I mean, overall, you, the, the document, you've seen most of it in, in, in um, bits and pieces from, you know, we went over the campus improvement plans. Um, you you um, oversee the, the budget. So as a board, so these are things that you have seen um, throughout all of our meetings, but as a parent new to a community or a, a current um, parent, this might be something that interests them. So, um, and it's a four for the 17, 18 year. So um, like, for example, on the finance it, reports, yeah. it's the actuals that were reported in 17, 18, which would have been for 16, 17. And then also some of the um, information in the tapper, which I think we've discussed in past meetings going over the tapper, some of the data in the tapper is actually from a, because it's the data that was reported in the fall. So like when it looks at turnover rate, it's looking at the teachers that you reported in the fall who didn't return from the prior year. So it would be teachers who were with us in 16, 17 that didn't return in 17, 18, right. not student, not that didn't return into this year. So when you're looking at the data, keep in mind that the data is representative of October of 17. And it was what was happening at that time. And so and it's looking at the rollover from that previous summer. Right. So that's what a lot of that report looks like. So when people look at the data, um, there's sometimes questions because it doesn't align with what you think you're looking at. And that's where that glossary comes into play, which I think I attached as well. Yeah, and so that uh, the glossary defines what those elements are and from what period of time period it's looking at. Another um, useful part of this is it really breaks down staff. It'll tell you how many staff are, um, are in the district, um, their how many years experience, the average years experience for a teacher. Um, it talks about the ethnicity breakdown of teachers. Um, it looks at the high degrees earned of, of the staff, and so it, so someone can really go in and really look at there's there you know for example um, this shows we have 22 percent of beginning teachers um, we have zero so there's some really good data in here you have zero percent of teachers with 20 years plus experience so you could begin to form an opinion to say that the majority of the staff at um, UA has um, has between one to five years experience. Um, again, this is for someone that really wants to dig in and really know the specifics from everything to how what are your demographics for students, what are your demographics for teachers. If you look at our teachers, we have um, 
29% of our teachers have master's degrees. 70% um, of our teachers have um, bachelor's degrees. Um, if you look at the breakdown between females and males, we have 14% males. You have 86% um, female staff. So, um, you know, again, it just really allows you to break down everything from your staffing, and then you can go in to break down everything from how your grade configuration. You can look at what percent of first graders do we have in the district, and how many are those, um, what's the total count, um, how, what's their ethnicity breakdown, um, how many are, um, are e, um, ECD, um, what about the mobility rate, looking at that as well. Um, I used to look at this when you really wanted to get to know a district, um, you could really start here. And if you really want to know exactly the staffing, the, I think you have to document the professional development days that staff are, are provided. Um, it, it pretty much gives a, an overview of your, your, your district and your schools within the district. I mean, you, you're very familiar with this report. I mean, yes, is there anything else that you My would... students love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I remember about the report. And I was going through my, my um, uh, Google Docs and I Program. This was basically my test was based off of this. I mean, they handed you one of these and you had to, to answer all the answers. Questions were aligned with that, this report. So, any other questions? Really, this is just an informational item. Um, and it's a good resource that if you have a parent that calls you, um, you know, or stops you in the, the parking lot and wants to talk to you about a concern, or, or you know, it's always good to have something that you can. Um, reference, but also just remind them that this is often outdated. So a lot of yeah. times, it's one of those things where I actually feel like it's too late to look at that now. I want to look at this. I'm going to look at where are our current staff standing as far as how many current staff do we have? What's the ethnicity breakdown? Where do we look at when? I mean, how many staff members have masters and bachelors? And I, I don't know that I would reference that very mm -hmm. much because it is outdated. I mean, I, I would think I would be talking about to a public standpoint, yes, there's always a year behind, but internally, like we we just submitted our PEMS yesterday. Yeah. Um, so with our fall PEMS data. So we know what those current data are. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. What a parent what I would actually talk about would probably be different than what a parent accesses. Yeah, right. And so right. that's where right. you run into some issues because I have parents that will call me and say, well, I saw this in a report and then I'm trying to figure out what report and then I have to explain that that was two years ago. Well, then the parent gets frustrated to say, well, your, well, your reports are outdated. Well, that's the most current. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I don't really, I don't refer much to it um, just because it is so outdated. There's, we have current data that we can easily access mm -hmm. from within. Okay, so the next um, item is the superintendent's report. So a couple of items here, um, budget updates. You want to talk about those? Yes, give me just a second. Let me get to it. Let me get to the last page. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Okay, um, so far this year we've received 2.1 million in revenue and we've had 2.3 <coughs> in expenses. And then I also wanted to point out on this report, now that our audit is approved, I can update this rollover balance to reflect our um, actual rollover uh, more accurately. Now keep in mind too, that on our budget, we, um, on the budget that you adopted in July, you adopted for us to be able to bring some funds from that fund balance. Mm -hmm. So the fund balance that she just reported, we have currently some of that money earmarked going into the current budget year. So, and that's why that number was was less than it normally would be because we had already accounted for. Um, I forgot how much we're we pulling out. Two hundred. Two hundred. What's in the budget? Two hundred even yeah. out of the fund balance to pay. Um, I know that we're paying off Longview this year, and then we're going to pay two hundred um, towards the, the purchase of the housing. Yeah, it, it had to do with facility. Yeah, I don't remember. I knew it did, but I, I remember yeah. we're paying off Longview, so Longview will be paid off at the end of this fiscal year, and then we will actually look at $200,000 to roll over into some of the fund balance to pay for the 
part. So in order to show, in order to show the payment going out in the building for the building payment, we had to be able to show the funds coming in. So just keep in mind that. So like, technically, we had originally budgeted a rollover of around, I want to say it was around six. I think was what it was. Some, six something was the original rollover that was expected. But then on this current budget, when we brought 200 something over, that's why that number went down some. So even out of the eight, eight. 30, I think mm -hmm. it is, 200 of that is already earmarked in yeah. this budget year. So does that make sense? So around six six what we're truly rolling. Yes. Yeah. So that number right there would actually be like six something um, because the eight something, 200 of it is already in that budget year yeah. as revenue coming in from the savings. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. oh, attendance, do you have that one? Yep. Uh, I've got a question. question. When you say you're paying off Long Beach, um, it, explain what that means. Okay, so Longview was, um, the facility in Longview was set out, um, it was a, a rental mm -hmm. lease agreement, um, and so basically it was set up to basically lease it for each year, and so we were paying a set amount of money each year towards that lease. Um, when we looked at that, we realized that um, it was in the best interest to look at a purchase, and which would allow us to release us from that lease agreement, then we would actually um, own the, the uh, facility. The university um, would own it. The university would own it. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so now after we pay that payment, that, that so we have actually this year, we, um, we budgeted to pay the actual payment and to pay off the facility, which was very similar. It was a little more than the actual payment. So really it was two payments in one year. And now at the end of this fiscal year, we will own the facility in Longview. The university will own it. Okay. And then we will then um, look to, to um, budget the money that we have currently had budgeted to pay on the Longview facility. Now we'll move it towards paying on the Powell facility each year. But the, the UT Timer still owns those facilities, not University Academy, yeah, which are paying that off. Yeah. Okay, that's what I want to make sure when you said we to. Yeah. Okay. And do we have to pay the university anything for using those facilities? Not as of right now. So, <clears throat> just you're still paying rent, I mean, um, utilities and, and that sort of thing, right? The university does? No. We do. No. How many cases do you The university does. Right. The university does. Right. Any other questions? So we put, we okay. uh, yeah, uh, plan lease fee, fee yeah. is inclusive <clears throat> of all the utilities and things, but that goes away now that Longview's getting paid off, right? Correct. Okay. So now the money that we will pay set aside in the budget will go towards paying off the Palestine facility. Gotcha. Um, and we have that on a, I remember a five year payout, I think, if that's correct. Mm -hmm. If we've ever, at least that was five years, we'll have the Palestine facility paid off. So, and hopefully, if we continue to roll over a substantial amount in our fund balance, that we could even look to do something very similar to what we did with Longview, is combine maybe two payments in one year to pay it off early. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, the next conversation is going to be what are we going to do about power? Sure. Um, and then also in Longview, looking at, we still don't have kindergarten there mm -hmm. um, and you know there is a high demand for that and that would that would be looking at probably placing another modular behind the current modular um, so there's a lot that needs to take place in a short period of time um, so definitely the sooner that we can pay off the policy camp the sooner we can begin to explore other opportunities um, so looking at current, I always just like to show you the current enrollment um, so as you can see each of the campuses um, Tyler, our largest campus with 319, Longview will be 259, the Palestine 168, and then a total of 746 um, for the for the district. I think our budget was built off of 750. Yeah, so and we're short 90, yeah. and a 96% uh, attendance. So we're so, so the attendance is really the, helping us mm -hmm. stay within our budget, even though we're under um, a couple students because of um, just. Um, under what we set aside the budget, so we set we built the budget off of 750, and even though that's under the attendance helps us, and so if we can keep that up, that's great. Um, next year, this chart we will actually be adding in Palestine K first and second, so um, that's exciting as well. So we that the numbers will definitely go up when we look at um, Palestine. And you can see the attendance for each campus, the overall attendance. 
The other piece of that puzzle, the 750 and the 96% attendance that was budgeted, we also were very conservative on our CTE values and our CTE enrollment now that the year has gone on and you're seeing our CTE numbers and how many have been enrolled in those courses, our CTE um, contact hours are substantially higher than the budgeted. So we should be seeing a good return on those CTEs. So even though we're down a little on enrollment, the attendance is picking up, but then also the CTEs. So budget-wise, we we're, we're right on track. We're actually um, should be seeing more, you know, more revenue than what we had anticipated. We're very conservative when we build our budget. We look at some <coughs> pops and we just kind of pretty much go with what we currently have, knowing that number is going to go up. I mean, we, we always seem to want to build a budget that we have a, a cushion versus running a top budget. Um, so, and it's hard for us because each year we seem to be able to provide what we need um, and work within the the, the budget and still have money to roll over um, when we need it for um, larger um, expenses. So um, the next note is a basic an overview of campus updates and I'm gonna um, bundle that with administrative updates. So to start with um, the um, Palestine facility, um, we have the groundbreaking um, scheduled, I think it's February the 10th, the 20th. Um, so we have that scheduled. Um, we have a meeting after this meeting to um, kind of go over a, um, to discuss some, some details, but the news is the facility has been ordered um, and is scheduled to arrive on um, April. Um, and so when it arrives, they'll, they'll place it there and begin all the, the other additional construction. So um, looking at that, we're very excited. Our goal is that um, teachers will be able to access the facility um, starting mid-July. Um, so that they can have um, access to their classrooms, begin setting up, um, and then um, us be able to be able to hold all the events that we need to hold with, you know, kindergarten registration and, you know, meet for teachers and things like that, and then allow teachers the opportunity to participate in their PD. Um, we're, I have requested that in the event we meet that timeline, that's just really going to give us enough time, or it's going to really need, it still be a very tight timeline, but, um, I don't want us to be in a situation where teachers are the day before, two days before school, trying to get access to, to you know, to put their rooms. Um, so we're really excited about that. Again, we're having a meeting this after this meeting to kind of go over some more details. Um, but everything looks like it's it is on um, track um, to meet the timeline. Um, another um, thing that we're having to look at is furniture. Um, and just to kind of bring you up to date. Um, the furniture that we did not pull to be utilized on the other two campuses. So when Longview um, facility was relocated, a lot of that furniture had to stay in that facility because that furniture, um, the, the Mathis Hall already had furniture. Now we use, we pulled some of it. Some of the furniture also was distributed out to the other campuses because there was a need and we thought, you know, if we have the furniture, we might as well just use that furniture. Um, some of that furniture that now that we're going back in and doing inventory, um, some of that furniture is likely may not be good. Um, and so now we're having to look at um, developing a, a budget to look at equipping all the, the classrooms K through 12 um, in Palestine. So um, that is going to be a, a, a quite a bit of money that we're going to have to look at. Um, we're, what we currently have our budget, we did budget in this budget um, for K-1 and 2 furniture and instructional supplies, but we did not budget for K-12 um, furniture. So um, we're having to begin to look at that and look at, okay, where we're we going to pull that from. So we may have to pull some money from our fund balance to um, equip the classrooms. So um, the other thing that we need that um, we're looking at is um, playground. Um, and so I'm hoping that um, I'm going to um, present something um, to the development board because a couple of the development board members have asked what, what is something that they can uh, begin to um, engage in, engage the community in, some type of fundraiser. Um, given now that we're having to equip uh, a lot more furniture than we had budgeted for, it would be very helpful if um, maybe their focus could be on um, raising money for the playground. And that playground to cost between around thirty-eight to forty thousand dollars to get a similar plot to what we have here in Tyler. Um, so that's something that I will be sending out um, to the to the um, development board um, once we kind of finalize. That's the direction we want them to take, um, or recommend that they take that direction. They've always asked us to 
represent what we think we may need, and that to me is going to be something we're going to need, especially if we're going to add K1 and 2. Any other questions about Palestine that you can think of? We will be sending out another newsletter to inform the parents about the uh, building scheduled to be delivered. I think that would be helpful when they know the building's going to be delivered. Um, we've already sent out the information about the, the groundbreaking. Um, and um, I think what else would we plan on including in there? We might, we might if we have, I don't know if it will be in this newsletter or maybe one afterwards um, in the event the, the uh, development board does decide to look at a specific um, fundraiser might be something that we could send out or they could send out to, to the parents um, to let them know where we're kind of directing that focus towards. The intentional parking, any, is there any? So, so that's something that we, um, that's part of the um, agenda item today okay. um, to talk about to see what the options are with parking because we know that when we add those additional grades, um, that's going to add additional employees. That's also going to add, add additional car um, pickup. Um, mm -hmm. to increase your pickup and drop off line because those kids, especially when you're adding those younger kids, um, that's, you know, if you look at adding 20, 18 to 20 kids, that's that's 60 more cars coming through that pickup, but they're all not associated or have siblings and things like that. So um, it, it could it could impact. So we've talked about uh, several options. We talked about doing a staggered dismissal, um, where you dismiss the younger students and the older students dismiss later, or you dismiss the older students first. Um, we've talked about other options. Um, I think the road may still be, be may still be on the table if you do uh, decide to build the road between the old sewing factory and Mathis Hall. Um, I just um, I really don't know all the details, but I do know that parking is something that is on something that, that the university is discussing and exploring and monitoring because I know that, um, for example, this week our teachers are parking remotely um, so that because of the start of school and there tends to be increased in um, traffic during that time. So, so definitely something we have to address. If we don't have a, another exit point, um, I really think we're probably going to have to do some type of staggered dismissal. Mm -hmm. Just because you, you get a situation where, you know, we did I, I, we did put in um, to play that parents could line up early. That's helping, um, you know, but parents, sometimes parents don't have a place to go. So some of them are just going in the parking lot and parking like they're, mm -hmm. they're parking and then they're getting a line. And then some of them, we heard that some of them are parking out on the main, um, highway and that was you know someone you know contacted us to say you know, parents were parked on the highway and that was a safety issue so you know we, we definitely don't support that and we told parents um but if there is an opportunity for us to allow them to park maybe at the old facility and drive over um but an access road would really be helpful uh, i think so too we could but i don't know what that would look like to budget wise do we how we would yeah, I, I don't really have the question um, if, if, if there is money there from the Development Council. I, I really don't know all the details of that. So we're going to need to talk about it and see if that's even on the table to do. I know it would make more sense if you have a bulldozer there, in my mind, if you have a bulldozer there to clear the property um, if, or to, to place the facility, then it would make, it much, make a lot more sense to go ahead and clear that road. But um, there's a lot of other factors in that that sometimes we don't have control of. But we are moving forward. We're very excited about yes. it. Um, um, Dr. Rutledge is working with her team to um, and to get the word out. So we're working with marketing. Um, in fact, we need to follow up on that. Um, so we're working with marketing to create a, a brochure um, to get the information out. Um, we're working um, to recruit teachers because we will have to fill a, a K1 and 2. Um, we're, she's doing a, a survey to kind of get a, a feel for how many parents have siblings. So we'll really know how many spots we actually do have open. Um, so we're trying to, to be proactive in planning because we know that um, there's a lot that has to take place from everything for hiring <coughs> teachers. Um, we definitely don't want to be in a situation where we don't have enough students. Um, and if you don't get the word out in time, most most parents right now, if they're going to place their child in a kindergarten, they're already making those decisions right now where they're going to place them. So um, I think getting the word out is, is kind of a top priority right now. I think um, we sent something out. We sent something out to parents letting them know that we were going to add because that came through the um, newsletter that Dr. Sherman and I sent out. 
But I think now the next thing that we've got to do is really to, um, begin to, to look at those numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, marketing advertisement. Yeah. Yeah. So we, talk, we talked Absolutely. about that as well. So that's an update on the um, Palestine, and I know that's kind of a priority right now. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an update on just kind of the district at large, we met um, earlier, we had our leadership meeting, and we talked about everything from this is our first graduating class. And so we are working um, on preparing for graduation, everything from developing the um, diplomas <coughs> to um, talking about you know the, the details of hosting a graduation and that is um that is a job in itself um to plan all the details of, of bringing three campuses together to one location um making sure that everyone's on the same page in communication um, so we are working on sending out a, a um, q a at the end of by next week to basically just address everything from how many you know, kids are asking, you know, how many parents can, I mean, how many guests can they invite? Where is the event? Well, we've told them, but we're trying to put it all in one um, document so that they know exactly what to be expected. We will have a planning session um, on the Friday before graduation. Graduation is June, the Saturday, June 1st. Um, and so I um, would love for all the board members to be there. And um, we will have a space, a space reserved for you. Um, and um, so that's kind of a, a top priority um, we have prom that's a top priority for kids, um, and so we're working on planning that, um, benchmark testing, analyzing that data, um, and developing those intervention plans. We also met today to look at um, the proposal for next year's calendar. So we do have a draft for next year. Um, some of the biggest changes that we've looked at um, would be on the day before um, the um, holiday. To take a to dismiss at noon versus keeping students in the entire time. So, uh, for example, the Friday before the um, winter break, Christmas break, we would dismiss at noon. Um, that's what most campuses around in the air the area do. What we find is when we don't do what most campuses, we don't mirror what most campuses do, then we are basically inundated with parents coming to pick the kids up. So, um, we're we're um, going to follow up with TA to make sure that we can, uh, have approval to look at um, some um, early dismissal days and um, to build within the schedule for next year. Um, and we're also considering two other early dismissal days where we're going to align that with when um, students take their benchmark so that we can pull teachers in and spend that two or three hours of just basically analyzing the student data to develop the intervention plans for the students. Um, instead of trying to piecemeal it together and, and have 45 minute sessions doing it all in one afternoon. Um, so we talked about the calendar. Um, um, anything else y'all can think of that we really went over today in the leadership meeting that was a priority? I'm trying to think of um, kind of an overview. I have my notes somewhere. Um, so a lot happening. Um, getting ready to, you know, we're kicking off the second semester and um, lots taking place. And um, this, you know, this is kind of now we turn our we turn our mind to you know looking at making sure students have have achieved the academic performance they need to achieve, but also planning for the, the 19, 20 school year. So everything from looking at what teachers are returning, what um, you know what programs we're going to look at for offering next year. Um, we have partnered um, with Mentoring Minds, um, and we're excited about that opportunity. They're going to they have um, donated one of their. Um, their programs um, that we can use for as our K through sixth grade students. Um, it's called Think Up, um, and it's a program that really challenges the student to um, explore and excel in 21st century skills. Um, and so we're real excited about that partnership. Um, and so teachers will receive the training, um, and they will utilize the material that's provided through Mentoring Minds. So we're real excited again about that that opportunity. Any other specific questions? I had one. Yeah. I've gotten a couple of questions from some parents, and the answer may be a simple matter of hours, but last year, I believe, a couple of snow days or ice days had us, instead of dismissing on a Thursday or Friday, we had to come back the following Monday to make up for that. And I've had several parents, and I guess maybe from listening to other parents at other schools say, well, White House opted out of their day and they just said, we're just not going to make it up. 
is it because we don't go a full day and we wouldn't meet the hours if we don't make that up? Or, it or, has to do the monthly minute requirement. The you know, monthly the, minute requirement. Well, the, or not the monthly minute, but the annual minutes requirement. Okay. Um, this, TEA implemented the 75,600 minute rule, which is how many minutes you have to have in the course of a whole year. And they call one day 420 minutes. Um, and so then, but then they, they've allowed some waivers for different things where you can utilize some of those minutes in other ways, like early releases and whatnot. The goal is they still have to have 75 to 6 by the end. So what some school districts are doing is maybe they're going less days, but they're going longer days. So, so they may be going till four o'clock or 3.30, or something like that, but then they're not going 180 days. So by meeting them, by doing that, as long as if they build in the fact that even if we have two snow days, we still have 75,000. They don't have to. to do that. Being a charter school who was established before, I think it was before 2015 is the rule. We have the option of going minutes versus days. Well, because we don't meet the 75.6, either we increase our calendar to meet 75.6 or we continue to go by days. Well, when you go by days, you have to have the two built-in gotcha. days. Gotcha. Yeah. But we have adjusted that. The best way to summarize that up is just to say, because we're a charter, we have to, we have to TA requires us to meet a set number of days. Okay. Um, and so that we are required to make up those days. Um, the only way that you can get a waiver is if you exceed the number of your, um, only way we can get a waiver is if we exceed the number of snow days. So let's say that we have two bad weather days built in our schedule, and let's say we end up taking four, we only have to make up the two. Correct. Okay. Yeah. But I will say we have adjusted for the, for the thing that you were talking about of having to come back. You know, in prior years, we had our two days at the very end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you basically went all your days, and then if you had used two, you were taking your two at the very end. This In this current calendar, we have one of the days that Monday after Easter. So assuming that we only have one bad weather day, um, you would use that day. And so you have a three-day weekend because you have Good Friday. So you'd still have your three-day weekend, and you would come back on Monday. And if you don't end up utilizing it, then you have a four-day weekend. Where, But our last one is still at the end, so you're kind of gambling with, are we going to have two bad weather days? But at least we've kind of tried to help with moving that one up um, so that the last one <clears throat> is still at the end. And unfortunately, there's not really a good place to kind of fix that day anywhere else. But I, along that same line, I had a parent ask about, I guess, other places where, because we're so technology-driven, logging in that time via technology. And so that will help me answer yeah. that question as well. <laughs> that would be the next, next one. Day. So any other questions, comments? I'm really proud of the audit. Um, it's just exciting to know that we're, we're able to do what we do um, and be, still be able to um, have money to roll over um, to look at future um, situations and facility needs and things like that. So that's exciting. I do have one additional announcement. Um, I'm sad to report, but I know that um, Dr. Sherman is happy to report um, that he has announced his retirement um, and he will be leaving us on August the 31st. Um, so, but I, I can't tell you, I think back and I'm not a very sensitive person, but you know, I, I started with him as a student and um, learned so much and now I have an opportunity to work with him. Um, just makes me know that what he does practice and he does <laughs> when he says he has high expectations, he has high expectations. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, we are so fortunate to have gotten through the last year. So I'll be honest with you, um, I know a little more sometimes than you have. No, uh, just because I, I'm in the know and uh, we're here today because of him. Yeah. Um, and um, we're so fortunate. So he really stood up for us and um, and for our kids and because he believes in um, what we're doing. So um, anyway, he, he assures me he's still here till August the 31st, but, um, but we, they will begin a search. But I wanted you to know, many of you already know, um, and um, very, very thankful for his leadership and what he's provided many of us in this room um, and know that he has definitely made a difference um, our lives as well as many, many children's lives. So, um, Dr. Sherman, thank you so much. And I look it. forward to continuing to work with you through August the 31st. And I'm sure we'll stay in contact. So. And without a doubt, I think one of the uh, 
things that I'm most proud of is the performance of the University Academy and the opportunity to demonstrate what K-12 education can be. And I think that's the key. Um, any additional questions before we adjourn? <coughs> Special shout out to these ladies again for the hard work yes. and um, on the audit. Um, it is countless it, it's, it's, it's Christian and her um, <laughs> crossing of eyes as she looked at a million spreadsheets yeah. every single day. <laughs> um, so that, that, that to prepare for the audit, it takes um, a lot of time. So this is a busy time for us. And this is um, shout out to everyone in this room that's being a director front now. has got their minds in two places. They're trying to plan for next year and then they're trying to to look at um, STAR. I mean, they know that they still, the kids still have to perform. Um, and so, uh, anyway, we have a great, uh, great organization. So yes. proud. Um, so proud of your support. Again, we thank you for serving on the board. Um, and we couldn't do it without you and appreciate you. And um, thanks again for all you do. Special thanks to you and all the directors for all the, the welcoming and the goodies. Just please tell the students that this is awesome. It really, really is all the hard work. That's just fantastic. It. That, that's a really feel good free thing. To, so. If you have time, feel free, free to walk through the campus and um, Ms. Jenny can definitely take you on a quick tour if you want to just walk through if you have time. Um, can you say hello and introduce yourself? I have a moment. Maybe we could get y'all's picture too. We would like to. Um, thank you and put that on our Facebook page too for your service. I mean, I'll do it. Yes. yes. Um, so the meeting is 1251. We are adjourned. I'll make a motion. Are you making a motion to adjourn? Oh, no, second. <laughs> do you agree? She didn't. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't.